in today's video, we're going to react to some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. The following video has gone viral on social media. People can't believe that it's a real animal or whatever it is. And some are saying it's in Arizona. Some are saying it's Australia. What I can confirm is this is not AI. It truly is a real animal. <laughs> and this was actually captured in Australia, not Arizona. Australia is a wonderful, beautiful, wild place, but it seems like they have creatures we've never seen before, and it looks like it's something right out of a sci-fi movie. Take a look at this, and if you know what this is, please let us know. I'm 100% sure that this is an AI generated video. At first it looked really creepy, but the more you focus on the legs, there's a bunch of weird things happening. So that pretty much tells me it's AI. If I am wrong, let me know in the comments, but I'm certain that that's AI generated. What the hell is in the woods in the Sunchild Nation Reserve in Alberta, Canada? because whatever it is, it was just caught on dash cam and it is terrifying. A lot of people think that it's a Sasquatch, but I don't know about that. The truck driver who actually captured this footage was picking up equipment near this area. He's driving down a dirt road to pick up this equipment too, so I think he may have like bought it, but pay close attention to in between the trees right here. It happens fast. Did you see it? An ominous figure is standing in between these trees and it looks to be covered in hair except for around its eyes. And it's just staring blankly at this man. I'm assuming to try to stay camouflaged. The man actually didn't see it when he pulled up and he continues to go get the equipment. He's walking towards the equipment when he sees this thing and immediately runs to his passenger side door, gets into his truck and leaves. The man stated that the creature is around 12 feet tall and the owners of the property have put up remote cameras to try to catch it on camera again. Like I said, a lot of people think that this is a Sasquatch, but when you zoom in on this thing, I don't know. The tongue almost looks like it's like a snake. I don't know. What do you guys think about this one? What do you think he just caught on his dash cam? I mean, at first I really didn't see it, but I do see it now. I'm not really sure if it's real or fake, and I'm not even sure I would have seen that if nobody would have called it out. It really blends into the environment. It could be a trick of the eye, or it could be a big, fake Bigfoot statue. Let me know in the comments what you think. I can't give a solid answer to it because I'm really not sure if it's real or fake. But if this is a real video, after seeing this, I would be terrified to be on this property because I would just think that there's a Bigfoot lurking. Yesterday that the concrete can't be older than 1950s. So they're right. So this had to be put on here on purpose before that. Let me shine the light. Okay, so that's what we started with. I checked this, it's hollow. But I checked the entire perimeter for about 16 freaking hours. I'm going to show you what I found. First of all, I found the door that I ne never knew was there. That's where that leads to. But I was looking around the entire thing and look what I found here. Over here somewhere. Hold on. I don't know if you guys could see, but there's, there's an arrow here. So then I walked over here. So then I spent freaking eight hours looking here. And guess what I found? Let me show you and not fall on my ass. So then I got up here and noticed, wow, this looks like a pathway. And then I kept walking on here. And this is another thing that I found. I checked every fucking rock. Then if you see, there's another, unless I'm high, but that looks like it. So I'm going to keep looking. What's up, guys? I want to put this into a reel. So like, follow, share. This is going to be really quick. So we found this underneath in the basement. So then I went outside and found this outside, if you guys remember. So then I followed it found this and now I kept coming up. I started walking up this entire hill and then out of nowhere, the earth opened up and there's a huge flat area right here. And there's wood around it, but why is this so flat? Does anybody know? But then I kept walking up here and then I came upon this flat rock here that completely stood out. And then guys, I found another arrow. Can you guys see it? There's another arrow right there. So now I have to go down here. So there's arrows coming up here, coming down into that opening right there. So I feel like that opening has to do with this flat area. 
that comes out of nowhere in the mountain. I feel like I need to get a smoke detector, not a smoke detector, a metal detector, and start doing it, because this flat area comes out of nowhere. I always find this stuff extremely interesting. You know, back in the old days, they could have been leading like a little hidden mat that led to a mason jar full of money. That is something very popular here in the south where I live. Actually, my great granny used to bury mason jars full of coins and money. So somewhere in my field, I'm sure there's plenty of mason jars full of money. Hopefully I get part three soon. Like I said, these are extremely new videos. So part three has not been uploaded yet. But once it's up, I hope that they find something good. Have you ever buried anything in your yard or have you ever found anything buried in your yard that was actually really cool? Let me know in the comments because I always find this stuff fascinating. Many of us have been following this horrific case regarding Wade Wilson. As you're probably aware, back in 2019, he committed two heinous crimes back to back, which unlived two innocent women. Well, during his sentencing, that's what I really want to focus on. He was given the death pen penalty. But it's what he does at the end that has raised so many questions. It looks like he does a secret hand signal but to who and to and why and what does it mean as i looked at the video completely and watched as it panned out the only people in front of him are one a police officer court clerks and the judge and based off how he's looking and where he's looking the direction it looks like he signals a judge but why and what was he saying take a look at this and tell me what you think Bird. That'll work. That works to see. 9 a.m. So I'll order a pre sentence investigation report and have the Department of Corrections uh, prepare that. And then we'll set. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Then we'll be adjourned. <laughs> Wow, I'm actually not even sure who that is. I've never heard of this person before, but it just looks extremely menacing and definitely looked like they were doing some kind of hand signal to somebody. I don't know if he was gesturing whether it was time for him to walk or what it may have been. I really do not know. It kind of reminds me of something from Dungeons and Dragons though, because in Dungeons and Dragons, if you play a rogue character, they have a special ability called Thieves Can't. And what Thieves Can't is, is it's something that other rogues can do where they can communicate with each other with sign language and hidden messages in writing. Let me know in the comments if you know anything about this person, because like I said, I've never heard of them before. During the debate, this guy and his wife noticed something really weird in Joe Biden's audio. Check this out. I swear to God, I heard someone say something. Let's see what your numbers are when this election is over. Let's see. You're a whiner. Oh my God. So I wanted to take a deeper look at it. So I brought it into Ableton so we could look at the part in between the words when this is over and we'll see. And you can see right here, there's actually some audio. It sounds like somebody's actually speaking and telling Joe what to say. So let's enlarge that and take a listen. So you can see right here, somebody's telling Joe what to say. Oh my God. And this is not to sway you in either way, but this is just showing you a discovery that was made. But what do you guys think? Was Joe being fed lines while he was doing the debate? It definitely did sound like there was faint audio being fed to him in that video. And it was a really smart idea to pull it up in Ableton and increase the volume on that one specific spot. It really wouldn't surprise me though, if most of these people are being fed information on what to, what to say, because they have handlers basically. And in Biden's position, I think he's so mentally unstable, and I'm not trying to be mean. I think that he's so mentally unstable that he has to have someone help him right now. Like, I do not think that he's mentally there anymore. But for sure, there was definitely some audio where you could hear someone telling him what to say. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that he was being told what to say? I personally think he was. And I also think that a lot of them are told what to say in general. You think Jesus was an alien? I think Jesus was half human, half alien, and I'll tell you why. 
when you look at the uh, the apocrypha text, you discover, first of all, in the regular Bible, you discover he's born of a virgin birth, right? But then in the apocrypha text, you discover that his grandmother was also born of a virgin birth. So it seems like this establishment of a bloodline there specifically. When you read the Animal Tablets of Thoth, you discover that he talks about he developed the ability to incarnate at will on and in any plane that he desires. That's pretty powerful stuff. He's saying he can come back however he wants and when he wants and in any, any dimension that he wants. Uh, he even talks about having rejuvenation chambers, which is what I believe the Serapium is located in Saqqara in Egypt is, is, is one of his rejuvenation chambers where they would actually uh, create bodies and put bodies in these gigantic megaton stone boxes made of granite and diorite, which are still radioactive, by the way. You can take your Geiger counter, they're still radioactive. They have an energy source coming out of them. And then he said that we, I would transfer my consciousness from one body to the next. He would leave another body in there rejuvenating for 100 years, and he'd come back and get it, and he'd do that over and over again. And that, by that method, he lived through eons. That's pretty interesting. I actually did not know that portion about him rejuvenating his body for eons, you know, by using someone else's body, basically. This is actually one story I've never heard from Billy Carson. I'm still not 100% sure if I'm a believer in the Emerald Tablets or if I'm a believer in what they say that the Emerald Tablets say. Even though I love the stories, I think that they're really cool. And if those stories are real, then that's incredibly amazing. But it's really hard for me to tell if they are real or if they are not. I know a lot of people disagree with the Emerald Tablets, and I know a lot of people agree with the Emerald Tablets. I have personally never read the book, and for the people that do believe in what Billy Carson says, please be respectful to the other people in the comments that have a different belief, and that goes to the people that have a different belief, please be respectful to the people that believe in Billy Carson, because there is a battle sometimes between the two of what's right and what's wrong when it's just information that we truly do not know from either side. So let's not fight about it and let's talk about it. We can disagree on our opinions, but we don't have to be aggressive about it, you know? So the dude who got the Neuralink implant now has aim hacks in his brain. I basically have an aim bot in my head. <laughs> that motherfucker's cheating! Earlier this year, Nolan Arbaugh, who is a quadriplegic due to a swimming accident, was revealed to be the first human to get the brain implant from Elon Musk's company Neuralink. And in a live stream, Nolan showed that his implant could control a cursor to use computers. And of course, play video games again. An advancement in accessibility to this scale is truly mind-blowing. But if you ask Nolan himself, it might have gone too far. Sometimes it's so good that it's moving before I even, like, think it to move that's right nolan himself thinks that he has an unfair advantage in video games now that no physical inputs are required and it's all just through his noggin in fact he believes that one day this might actually become an issue probably have like different leagues uh for people like me because it's just not fair that's actually pretty interesting and it makes me think of future possibilities on what people are going to do with this technology for example imagine you have the neural link chip in your head and you are a soldier that has a weapon that can aim itself as long as you can see the target i could see the military utilizing this to their advantage so i'm a little skeptical about it being completely done with his brain i think it might be if anything done with two different things his eyes and his brain with his eyes what's actually manipulating the mouse cursor and movements with his brain is what's activating the clicks and the commands to the input. That's just my theory, I could be completely wrong. Because if he's actually able to use a controlling system to control a video game, why does he have to have a mouthpiece to control his wheelchair? Why did they not hook up his wheelchair with the same control schematics that he is using to manipulate video games to manipulate his wheelchair? Of course, have the mouthpiece there just in case you can't, use the mind at the time, but you would think that that would be his primary way to move his wheelchair would be with his mind because he's got the Neuralink chip, but instead he's always got to move it with his mouth. And that just seems a little fishy to me. This happened during December, like in the 90s. I don't know exactly what year happened in the 90s, like in Utah. It's like a husband and a wife, his mother-in-law and his two daughters, right? They have a cabin in the woods that they would go to and always like celebrate for their family and stuff, right? While they're there, these two men break into their cabin. They instantly shoot the mother-in-law and the wife, and they shoot the dad right in the head in front of these two girls. Force the two girls to get onto the snowmobiles, and they tell them to go down the hill. They're going down the hill, and they see their uncle walking up like he had just got there, like he was like he got to the party late type shit. 
Yeah. And the uncle's like waving at them, and the girls just don't like it, and they just go straight down. They force the girls to go to like where they're they had parked their cars. Yeah. And it pretty much forced the girls to get into the cars, and they drove off with the girl in the car. So the uncle sees all this, like, what the fuck is going on? And then he sees a snowmobile coming towards him with somebody on it, and he's like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. His f- brother survived getting shot in the head by those guys are you serious yes so they call the police they get police to come help this guy and uh, they go tell the police so police set off like hella roadblocks and yeah shit. and they ended up catching these dudes and the dad who got shot in the face testified against him in court really yes bro since it was so cold like literally like the blood was like dripping from the floorboards and, and making icicles little blood icicles yes bro. oh my god wild and this is the most like weirdest you could possibly do i think cops ended up finding like a vhs tape in yeah. the cabin and they thought like it was just some some something from the family but it was a serial killer dudes opening up all the family's presents really yes and they recorded it wait did you see the video no nah, I, I never seen the video but there's I a picture just say, seen a picture of the, the dude of holding, the guys opening the he's holding the he's holding the present yeah holy right. Well, RP to those people that died in that situation. Man, that's so crazy. People are really messed up out here. To come into someone's home, take lives away, film yourself opening up presents, that's just so messed up. What is wrong with people? It's unfortunate that so many people lost their lives in this act, but luckily the father did survive did get help and the bad guys did get put away for it so there is a little bright side to the story but overall it's still a nightmare a tablet inscribed with the secrets of reality the emerald tablet is believed to be an emerald or green stone tablet containing the universe's secrets its origins are still a mystery and are surrounded by many legends but the text first appeared in Arabic around the late 8th or early 9th century. One legend says that the tablet was discovered in a hidden tomb beneath the statue of Hermes in Tyana, held by a corpse on a golden throne. The corpse of Hermes Trismegistus himself. One of the key figures in alchemical mythology is Hermes Trismegistus, also known as Hermes the Thrice Great. His name comes from the Egyptian god of wisdom Thoth and the Greek god Hermes. The Hermetica are texts attributed to Hermes Trismegistus and are considered the foundation of Western alchemical philosophy and practices. It is believed that Hermes Trismegistus wrote the Emerald Tablet. Medieval and early modern alchemists linked the Emerald Tablet to the making of the Philosopher's Stone and the production of artificial gold. Some believe it shows how to complete the magnum opus, or the great work. Some say the lack of evidence can only mean the tablet is a hoax created by medieval alchemists. Regardless of the various interpretations, the tablet has attracted the attention of influential minds throughout history such as Roger Bacon, Albertus Magnus, John Dee, and even Isaac Newton. I find the story around the Emerald Tablet so fascinating. I did look up in Google just to confirm, and I'm not 100% sure because you know it's the internet, but Googling if the Emerald Tablets are actually real, if there's a physical Emerald Tablet out there, and apparently there has been no found evidence of actual Emerald Tablets. I don't know if I believe in the Emerald Tablets, I just really enjoy the lore behind them. Let me know in the comments of what you think about the Emerald Tablets. I know we just talked about Billy Carson and the Emerald Tablets, but this is a little bit more of the lines, are the Emerald Tablets even real in the first place? I'm going to show you a leaked photo beyond the ice wall as well as who exactly sent it. And this place exists alongside one of the actual areas on the ice wall where there's land but we're not sure where which gate or area in antarctica this actually is now this isn't a new photo i'm going to show that one to you next but this is the one that came out about a year ago and a lot of people actually think that this one is real it shows vegetation and ice wall and an advanced egg-like type city going on back there now here's the new photo of what is supposedly beyond the ice wall, which shows vegetation next to ice, which is what Admiral Byrd talked about when he flew over Antarctica. And a lot of people are thinking that this is actually up close to that egg-like type city. And now let me tell you who actually leaked this photo. The person who leaked it on their telegram was Valiant Thor, who if you've never heard of him, 
He's from Venus, supposedly, and he came to Earth in the 1950s. I also did a reverse image search to see if this was from Greenland or something, but I couldn't find anything, and that's because this is unlike anything we've ever seen before, where there's ice right next to healthy green vegetation. It'd have to be super cold for the ice to stay in a formation just like that. And I also don't think this is AI generated because there's no abnormalities in the grass or anything. I don't know about that. I'm almost certain that that's an AI generated photo. Not 100%. Let me know in the comments of what you think. I'm thinking that it's an AI generated photo personally. And just real quick, I just went back and rewatched the video. There's a little logo at the very bottom left of the video that looks like a B. It makes me wonder if it was done with Bing's AI generated photo software. The following video is from a woman named Tamara Lynn. And what I can tell you is this is not police emergency vehicles. These are not firefighters. These are not EMTs. It's truly an unidentified object. She captured the back of her home. The interesting part about this is when you watch the video, the sound that emits from it, it's not a normal vehicle sound. I have no information for you on where this was taken, how it happened. It's literally left up to you to wonder on what's going on here. I can tell you that this was posted on June 25th, 2024. She has not posted anything else, nor has she commented or explained what's going on. It's almost as she's gone dark. Take a look at this video and tell me what you think this could be. first I was watching this, I had a hard time figuring out what it could be. The sounds sound familiar though, so I was looking at the video again, and if you notice on the upper left side, there's a power line going through the trees. It's very faint and it's very hard to see, but there is a power line. I think that that's the power line going out near the transformer. That's my only guess. Otherwise, I really don't know what it could be. In science news, what the holy f did you guys create? A lab out of Tokyo decided to try to make living skin out of human cell cultures in order to have a robotic skin that acts more similarly to our own. Now when I first saw this, honestly I thought, surely that's silicone, but no, it's actual human tissue. One of the big problems for robotic skins is that they don't have that strength and elasticity that ours have, so why not create something that's alive and can heal? What you're looking at here is the actual anchoring to the tissue matrix, and it actually has elasticity and moves a lot like our skin. They also want to add sebaceous glands, a complete circulatory system, nerve endings, and a living skin that can heal. Although I think that makes it susceptible to infection. Aside from the extraordinarily creepy aspects of this, this could be a game changer for people with amputations. Imagine having a robotic limb that you can actually feel. Something that functions very much like your actual skin. I do, however, think that sometimes scientists spend too much time in the lab and just forget how goddamn creepy things are sometimes. I am going to have nightmares. Wow, that is really disturbing looking, but I'm not against it. At first I was. At first I was like, why would you give robots skin? Real skin at that. I, I kind of understand now if we're going to have robots because of all the bending and the movements, it's going to wear and tear on synthetic skin. So you need to have a skin that can heal itself and maintain itself during those movements. That does make sense. But what really sold me on it is when she said that it could be used on people with prosthetics. That actually makes a lot of sense. I have a love-hate with this at this point now because I, I see the creepiness in it, but I also see where people could feel normal again in a way. Let me know what you guys think. If you can wrap your head around that right there, I can show you how it makes everything that you see around you. This is a vortex. The concept of the vortex will make math, science, art, anything you can imagine far easier to understand. Vortexes are everywhere, from solids to liquids to gases to plasmas to sound. Everything is a vortex of some sort. 
That is how the wing of that plane creates the vortex that you see. If you follow me, you'll know this is the harmonic series. The harmonic series is how we perceive how waves fit inside waves in a harmonic fashion to create a vortex of sound. Your ears are literally processing a vortex of sound that enters your ear. When waves fit inside other waves nicely, this is called harmonics. This is how color works as well. And the really freaky thing is this is also how magnetic fields work. The secret to all of this is this guy right here. This is the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio, and we see it on all scales. And it's very easy to make with just circles. The relativity of time is experienced through this spiral. That's why the second hand and the hour hand move at different rates. This is also how black holes modulate the experience of time. Black holes and matter are also linked through this spiral. When atoms resonate at a specific frequency, we call them an element. Atoms within our perception appear as little spheres. Humans perceive particles as spheres, but when we look closer, we just see that it's light spinning in a container. By containing that vortex, you're able to perceive the qualities of the element. Depending on what your senses are tuned to, this is going to provide you a specific experience of that vibration. You see this best in plasma, and if you contain that plasma and you can modulate the time or the frequency, then you can modulate matter. Malcolm Bendel's plasmoid unification model is how we link matter and energy together through the torus. The way we should be teaching this is nature. Nature is the best teacher and it's the coolest thing to watch. Once you become interested in the phenomenon, you can start playing around with the frequencies. That's what musicians do. Then you can use something like cymatics to actually see what that looks like in real life. Doing this makes a connection between theory and reality. If that continues to excite you, then you could start learning the math. A frequency is just an equation of motion over time. Matter is just the behavior of this frequency in relation to time. That's E equals MC squared. Here's the coolest part. You only need to know this one thing to understand that the quantum world behaves the exact same way as the galactic world. And right in the middle happens to be right where you are. The perfect spot to learn everything you can about every world. Half man, half goat. No, not Lil Wayne. No, no, wrong, wrong one, bro. The other goat. The goat man legend goes by many names. In Kentucky, they know him as the Pope Lick Monster. In Texas, they call him the Lake Worth Monster. The most famous version comes from Prince George's County in Maryland. The legend was popularized in 1971 after local residents blamed a dog's death on the creature. He was also blamed for the death of livestock in the area. Usually he is depicted as a goat-like creature covered in hair with horns, a human torso, and goat legs, similar to the fawns of Greek mythology. He is said to roam the backwoods of Beltsville, attacking cars with an axe and chasing teenagers. The origins of Goatman are unknown. Stories range from escaped circus freaks to reincarnated farmers who sacrifice goats in exchange for satanic powers. Some claim the Goatman was originally a scientist named Dr. Stephen Fletcher, who worked at the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center. Allegedly, an experiment involving goats went horribly wrong, transforming him into part man and part goat creature. After this mutation, he became violent and started attacking cars nearby. Another variation of the story claims the Goatman was actually an old hermit who lived in the woods and was often seen walking alone at night along Fletcher Town Road. I've heard of the Goatman plenty of times. I would like to know more or less from people in the comments that live near where the Goatman has been spotted if you believe in the Goatman because I really don't believe in the goat man. I believe more or less in Bigfoot than I do the goat man personally. Let me know though. What do you believe? This is so funny. So there's this Chinese waterfall. It's the tallest one in China. So there's a hiker that was going around. He's going to the top of the waterfall. He goes over to the edge and he takes a closer look and he sees something. What happens to be not a natural river, but a pipe full of water. What? What? The only thing that's leading water down that mountain is a huge pipe gushing millions of water per second. Is it artificial? They say this is just during the dry season, but they're looking back and everything and they're saying, no, there's no marks of rainwater growing enough. That's what they're saying, but it's just huge news now and the Chinese government's trying to cover so their it's butts. it's a fake waterfall? It's, it's a, a fake waterfall. Attraction. They've done it for tourism because there's a ton of money that they get in Whoa. for tourism from it. So that is so funny. The sole purpose is just for the waterfall. There's no like... No, that's it. A purely a tourist attraction. Yikes. And so it's just like, oh, that stinks. But that's what happens with Ruby Falls in Chattanooga too. They have that cave that like it dried yeah. up. It used to be a waterfall, but now it's all... It, they still have it running, but oh, it's they, all... They pump in water? It's all artificial. That just makes me wonder about all the other things in the world that could potentially be fake. All these national parks that have all these amazing geysers and waterfalls who knows maybe it's all fake hey if you haven't done so already go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel i only ask once per video and i make a video like this almost every day 
and currently we're at 10,973 subscribers. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you for being subscribed and thank you for watching. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. As always, if you enjoyed any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.